Hi guys, welcome to today's video on rationalizing the denominator for thirds. And this is a really funky piece of maths. I'm Darren, really good to see you. If you're new to my channel or my uh, website, hi, welcome. Thank you very much for dropping by. Um, if you can, head to YouTube and subscribe, greatly appreciated. Uh, it just tells me you're watching. Um, I'm not going to get rich, certainly not going to get famous. Um, but it does just let me know that people out there are watching and appreciating my work. So greatly, greatly appreciate if you could. If you're not on my website, head over there. Uh, the lessons all have downloadable notes. And they're time coded. And there's lots, lots more to come. And it's free to sign up. So uh, yeah, head over there and uh, hopefully you find what you need. We have been dealing with a number of uh, videos so far where we introduced thirds, we've added them and subtracted them, we've multiplied and divided them, and now we're gonna look at this thing called rationalizing. So by the end of this video, hopefully, uh, we're gonna look at seeing why and how we can remove the third from the denominator by multiplying by itself. And we've talked about this in previous videos. If you haven't seen those previous videos, head back there, they are awesome, and not very long. Um, and uh, obviously, you're gonna be able to rationalize your denominator by the end of this video. We've added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. We've looked at the distributed law and how we can multiply out sets of brackets. And we've always had the third at the top. So for example, we've had things like root 15 on three. And we've gone, yeah, okay, that's awesome. Uh, I don't think I've had any examples where we've had the third on the bottom of a fraction. So if I had it the other way around as three on root 15, um, part of my brain now is going, whoop, 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 danger, Will Robinson, you're not allowed that. Uh, that was a really bad American accent, but anyway, we'll give it a go. Now, convention, and by that we read Barry, states that we are not actually allowed to have a square root sign in on the denominator of a fraction. They're going to try and say, why? Who knows? And to be honest with you, who really cares? In the same way as if I couldn't have 3 divided by 1.5, right? We know that we cannot have fractions and decimals mixed together. We also can't have a half divided by three. Yeah, just we've got things in place to allow us to deal with that, to be able to make sure that we write a fraction as specifically that a fraction. And the same is true now when we start to introduce third. So whenever we see a root sign on the bottom of a third, we're gonna to have to take some steps to get rid of it. Now, what does it mean by multiplying a third by itself? Again, we've, we've looked at this in a previous video. If I have the root of three times the root of three, what does it become? Well, doing it the long way, that becomes three times three. Oh, he says writing nine again. His brain's telling the answer. That becomes the square root of nine, which we in fact know is three. Now, what we tend to notice then is that when we multiply a root by itself, we know that that is actually squaring. And reverse operations, a square and a square root are in fact the reverse of each other. Now, a word of warning. If I have a cube root and I square it, they do not undo each other. Why? Because that two and that three are not the same. We should really, for square roots, write a little two beside the root sign, but we in fact don't. Anyway, so when I square root a square number or square a square root, I end up back with just the number. And that's sort of the hint of what we're coming up to later on. So here's a quick quiz. What number can you multiply a fraction by which will change the size of the fraction but not the ratio of its numerator and denominator? I'll wait. No, it's okay. I won't wait because actually the answer is the number one. Yes, indeed. The number one. We can multiply. If I have a half times one on one, what do I get? I get a half. Now, it was a bit stupid, but what about if I multiply a half by three on three? Well, in this situation here, 3 divided by 3 is still 1. The ratio of top to bottom is if I multiply the top by 2, I get to the bottom. But if I now multiply those fractions, I get 3 on 6. Is the ratio of the numerator to the denominator still the same? I should cocoa. 3 to 6, still multiplying by 2. So multiplying the number 1, or multiplying a fraction by the number 1, is, well, it's a bit of a trick. But is it useful to us? Well, the number one can take many forms, as I've just said there. So we can have one on one. We could, if I want to, do a on a, or we could do the root of two divided by the root of two. All of these are one, because the definition of one is divide any number by itself, and you get one. Yay, fabulous. Again, what has this got to do with thirds? Well, if I want to rationalize the denominator, that just means I have to get rid of the square root sign. Doesn't mean I've got to get rid of the number, I've got to get rid of the square root sign. So if I look at this first example of two root three, let's look at the bottom. What is there? It's a root three. What don't I want there? Root three. 
Now I can't change the ratio of the sides or the ratio of this fraction, but I can multiply by one. So if I now multiply by root three on root three, how is that gonna help me? Well, remember when you multiply a third by itself, the root sign goes Oh, So two times root three becomes two root three, and root three times root three becomes three, and ladies and gentlemen, I've just rationalized my denominator. That's it, that's quite literally all there is to it. Yeah, it gets a little bit trickier with the uh, third or fourth example. So now let's look at three root two times the root of five. What do I do there? We'll look at the bottom. What is my third? It's root five. So I'm actually gonna multiply the top and the bottom by root five divided by root five. I'm still multiplying by one. So I get three. Root two times root five is now root 10. Can that be simplified? Nope. And five, uh, root five times far, uh, root five is in fact five. And there we go, three root 10 divided by five. Do I have a third on the bottom anymore? No, so we're done. <laughs> oh, two root seven divided by five root two. Now, this is where we get tricky. It's not about multiplying the bottom by what's on the bottom. Yes, in this situation, there was the root three, so we times by root three. In this situation, we multiply by root five because that was the only thing on the bottom. In this situation, yes, I could multiply by five root two on five root two. I would get an answer that I would then have to simplify. But what is it we're trying to get rid of? And if we remember, we're trying to get rid of this root two. So actually, it makes sense to just multiply by root two on two. I don't need that additional five. So what now happens, I get two times the root of 14 because root seven times root two is that. I get five times, root two times root two is two, and so I can now do some canceling out. That two there cancels with that two there. So I get root 14 on five, and there is my final answer, yay! Right, last one. Now this is where life gets a bit trickier. Actually, I'm gonna rub this out here to give myself some room. Um, so that's gonna be equal to, what did I say, root 14 on five. Now we're gonna deal with this one here, one, minus root three on root three. Now, this is where they start to get a little bit more complicated. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm just gonna multiply here by root three on root three, because that's what's on the bottom. But I need to be careful because I actually have two terms on the top of this bracket, on the top of this fraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put those in brackets, which now reintroduces my distributive law. So I'm now gonna end up as root three multiplied by one minus root three, divided by root three times root three, which I'm just gonna write as three. Now, you could leave it that way. Um, the question generally will give you some sort of indication of the format it wants the answer in. That would be perfectly acceptable as an answer, but I'm gonna use the distributive law and multiply that out. So root three times one gives me root three, minus and root three times root three, yes, because I'm doing this, gives me three, on three. And ladies and gentlemen, that's my answer. Now please remember you can only cancel fractions when the numerator and the denominator are all multiplied together or they all have the same multiplier in each of the terms. Now while there is seemingly a three in each of these terms, you can't cancel them down. And no, I can't cancel that three and that three because of that negative sign. So in this situation, please be very careful to make sure that you only cancel things down when you need to. Yes, do these questions get a little bit more complicated? Of course they do. You'll end up with brackets times brackets and all sorts of stuff, but it's part of learning. Practice, make mistakes, you'll be fine. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel and head over to masscrew.com if you're not already there and sign up. Otherwise, I'm done for the day. It's been good to see you. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you're well, stay safe, see you again. Bye-bye.